All right, so today um, I want to go over LEDs quickly with everybody. So who knows what LED stands for? Hands were up before I even asked the question. Yeah. Light emitting diode. Light emitting diode. Good. So raise your hand if you use LEDs in one of your projects. That's right. It's a very popular, very popular tool to use. Uh oh. So it's a very popular tool to use. As most of you already know, an LED looks like this on a schematic, right? Okay. So it's light emitting. We all know what that means. It, it lights up. Um, what does diode mean? No. It means that uh, it, on, it only allows the electricity to flow one direction. Right on. So there's... This is an LED, let me draw for you a normal diode, right? That's a normal diode. Um, notice the light's not coming out, that's how you can tell the difference. So, like Noam said, current, I will only flow this way. It will not, it will not flow this way. Until you give it some huge voltage of like 60 volts and then it will flow. So you can force it there, but generally, for your projects, it'll only flow that way. Okay. So, if you've got a diode and it only flows one way, how can you use it? This is my favorite question to ask. How, yeah? You can use it to protect something, um, like a component that can't handle, um, like, a large amount of current. Um, I'm not sure how well that would work in that scenario. It's possible. Um, yeah, so we can use an example um, where, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. I, I'll show you how you can do that. Yeah. Um, it, you can use it to help sell if something's working properly. Sure, an LED. You yeah. put it in there, you just want to see if it's lit up or not. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's like similar to what Sam was saying. Like, I know like a bunch of the Minty Boost um, kits, or all the Minty Boost kits, they had a diode um, where the IC would get like their its voltage so that it would output it and it wouldn't come back and fry the IC. Right. Right. So that's a perfect example is when you're doing a switching boost controller, you want to have current flow one way but not the other way. So it could be used for that. Um so how how might, might we look at this in a circuit? And I'm gonna I'm gonna do the, the simplest example and the most common one here at Blue Stamp. And that is how can we take um, a microcontroller like an Arduino, and it's got an I.O. pin. How can we control an LED with that? I mean, how can we light an LED up? What do we need? Yeah. Uh, we tell the microcontroller to pulse the LED for a certain amount of time, or like turn it off. Sure. So you want this guy to look like that, right? So you want it to turn on and then turn off. Okay. And then what do we need here? LED resistor. Yeah, LED and resistor. You need both of them. So let's talk about that. Resistor, LED. And this goes to ground. Right? Anytime you hook up an LED to anything, it should have a resistor. The exception is Arduino pin 13 because they already put a resistor in there. It's, this is already on the board. But any other I.O. pin, you need a resistor. Who knows what this resistor is called? It's got a specific name when it's used in this arrangement. Who, well, let me ask. Who knows what that resistor does? Yeah? It limits the amount of electrons that can go to the LED. Awesome. So it limits the amount of electron, or it limits the current that can go through the LED. So it's called a current limiting resistor. That's its whole thing, right? OK. So why do we have that there? Yeah. I think because LEDs uh, only need a, a very small amount of current to run. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to give them a, a lot because it could ruin the LED. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So what I'm going to talk about right now is called an IV curve. An IV curve, this is voltage, and this is current. Okay. So 
for any component, you can make an IV curve. Uh, some of them doesn't make as much sense as others, but for components like LEDs and resistors, you can make an IV curve, and you can describe, if I give it one volt, how much current will go through it. If I give it two volts, how much current will go through it. And if I give it three volts, how much current will go through it. So if I give it one, two, and three volts, let's, let's use the simplest example ever. Let's use a one ohm resistor. All right, so we're going to do an IV, IV curve for one ohm resistor. At one volt, with a one ohm resistor, how much current does it get? Yeah? One amp. One amp. Good. So it's here. At two volts, how much does goes through a one ohm resistor? Two amps. Two amps. Good. You guys recognizing the pattern? Three amps. Three amps for three volts. Good. Three volts, three amps. So we have this line, right? This is called a linear ID curve. And the reason is V equals IR is a linear relationship. You increase V by some amount, you're going to increase I by some proportion and amount, the proportion being the resistor. All right? So the, the weird thing about LEDs, or diodes in general, all diodes act this way. Is, this is a diode, so I'll just put this here. One ohm resistor diode. The weird thing with this is you give it up to some voltage, maybe we'll call it um, one volt, just to be easy. It could be 0.5 volts, it could be two volts, it could be four volts. But we'll call this specific diode, if you give it one, anything below one volt, it puts almost no current through. And then as soon as you give it one volt, or whatever this, it's called a forward bias voltage, whatever the forward bias voltage is, it goes crazy, right? So you give one volt here, you give two volts here, you give three volts here, and this goes up to infinity. Not really, it goes up until the thing fries, but in theory, infinity. All right, so if we have this curve, what happens if you give it five volts? Yeah, you will fry. I mean, if in this specific case, 5 volts equals infinity current, guess what infinity current doesn't like to go through, right? So um, in this case, you need a current limiting resistor, which is what we just talked about, um, this guy right here. Because this Arduino is going to put out 5 volts, you put an LED in there, it's going to cook. And depending on the LED, it might not cook instantaneously, it might wait an hour to cook, but eventually it'll get dim and die. Okay, so that's a, good, that's a good thing to know about a diode. So then how can we figure out what resistor needs to be here? Use V equals IR. Use V equals IR. So if we know, let's say, okay. We, yeah, we have a few givens, and then we have to like solve for the rest. Right. So, um, what are the key parameters for this? What would you What would you want to know about this system if you're going to calculate this resistor? Yeah. How much voltage you're expecting to get? How much voltage you're expecting to get where? I'm um, coming from the Arduino. Coming from the Arduino. Good. So we have five volts here. Excellent. <coughs> what else do we need? Um, how many volts the LED needs to properly function? Yeah, how much volts, how many volts does the LED need to properly function? So how can we figure that out with this graph? Before it goes plug it, exponential. Right, so you definitely don't want to be over here, for sure. So where on this line do you want to be? Yeah, so it's, it's up to you as the designer, where do I want to be? How bright do I want it to be? So let's say you look at the, what you do is you look at the current rating of the diode. We know we can't do 5 volts because it's not going to be rated for infinity current. But it will be rated for some current level. So that diode, you look at the data sheet. Remember the data sheet from the transistors? Mm -hmm. Diodes have the same data sheet. Different stuff listed, same idea. So we look at it and we pick one and it's like, okay, this diode is rated for 10 milliamps. So it's not going to be super bright. It's going to be just a little indicator diode. So we're going to go... 10 milliamps. 